World War I pilot dies and his photo appears in a group shot. There were really a lot of people who lost their lives during World War I, but the death of an air mechanic Freddie Jackson was the beginning of something completely mysterious and incomprehensible that continued to hunt airman Sir Robert Victor Goddard for many years. When he saw the photo for the first time, he couldn't believe his eyes. But who actually could? In this picture, there's a group of the unit called Goddard Squadron. At first glance, there's nothing unusual or strange, just a lot of men wearing uniforms and smiling. But among them, there is something completely paranormal. Freddie Jackson's image is among this group of brave people, and it could be absolutely okay as he was a member of Goddard Squadron. Yet, there is one little detail that turns the whole perception upside down. Freddie Jackson had died a few days before this photo was taken. The man walked right into a rotating propeller and got serious injuries. They were so severe that he couldn't survive and died. So how did it happen that he appeared with his squadron? The picture was taken around 1918 or 1919, and is absolutely true as a lot of facts are simply undeniable. Actually, a man, Sir Robert Victor Goddard, was reportedly in this photo, which was taken at HM Naval Seaplane Training School in Lyon, Solon, England, later renamed HMS Daedalus. In 1917, the building was the place where pilots were trained to attack the invading German submarines during World War I, but it's not an explanation of why a dead soldier appeared in the picture. According to the website liveabout.com, this photo was taken on the day of Jackson's funeral. In 2015, an author, Blake Smith, claimed on the skeptic website it was in the same place where Jackson died. Jackson's image was not a one-time paranormal event in Air Marshal Goddard's life. In 1935, Goddard was flying his biplane over Scotland when something out of the ordinary happened. While telling his weird story, the Daily Record quoted J. H. Brennan's book, Time Travel, A New Perspective. In 1935, while still a wing commander, he was sent to inspect a disused airfield near Edinburgh at a place called Drem. He found it in a very dilapidated state with cattle grazing on the grass that had forced through cracks in the tarmac. During 1917, the British soldiers set up an outpost called West Fenton Aerodrome in the village of Drem, but this base was abandoned from 1919 until 1933. Everybody believed Goddard when he said he flew over Drem in 1935 and saw the abandoned airbase, but later his words got the mysterious shade. Later that day, he got into trouble while flying his biplane in heavy rain and decided to fly back to Drem to get his bearings. As he approached the airfield, the torrential rain abruptly changed to bright sunlight, Brennan wrote. When he looked down, he saw the airfield had been completely renovated and was now in use. There were mechanics in blue overalls walking around and four yellow planes parked on the runway. One of these was a model which, for all his aviation experience, he completely failed to recognize, he continued. Could it be possible that for a moment Goddard saw something he definitely shouldn't have seen? Was it something wrong with his instruments? Could it be possible that he was just hovering over the wrong coordinates? As it turned out, Goddard saw the right base, yet at a completely different point in time. In 1939, the airbase at Drem was completely renovated, including a new runway for the Royal Air Force Base to use during the inevitable World War II. So, everything leads to the fact that Goddard had seen something that didn't happen until four years later. But how? Shreds of evidence suggest that the storm sent Goddard four years forward in time. Moreover, the man stated the aircraft was yellow, which was quite common in 1939. But in 1935, all training aircrafts had a silver color, and that's not the last unexplained phenomenon. Goddard also claimed the crew's uniforms were blue, which again was common in 1939. But in 1935, all the workers had a tan uniform. These claims unlock the possibility the man had probably traveled in time. When World War II was over, Goddard was celebrating at a drinking party in his honor in Shanghai. Everything was good until the moment when he heard another guest's conversation about his dream. The man who was talking was Captain Gerald Gladstone, a skipper aboard the HMS Black Prince. In accordance with his dream, Goddard was crushed in a plane accident. Once Goddard heard about his death, he was allegedly quoted telling Gladstone, I'm not quite dead yet. What made you think I was? Gladstone was embarrassed when he realized Goddard had eavesdropped on his story. He shared more details with a man that stated Goddard was flying a transport aircraft over the coast of Japan with three civilians on board, but the plane crashed due to the rough weather. Glanstone continued, I watched it all happen, you were killed. The same night after the celebration, Goddard found out he had to fly a Dakota-style transport plane over Tokyo, and there were three passengers who had to join him. The horrid Gladstone story didn't stop him from getting on the plane and he headed to complete the mission. 
As Gladstone had said, the aircraft crashed due to the anomalous storm. However, fortunately, Goddard with his passenger survived. The man was shaken after the accident, and in a year he asked Gladstone to provide him with more details, but the man didn't have anything else to offer him, and yet Goddard couldn't let it go. In 1951, Goddard decided to write an article about his weird story in the Saturday Evening Post. British filmmakers got interested in it and proposed Goddard turn his experience into the film The Night My Number Came Up. They also mentioned that such mystical phenomenons were quite common during the war era. But did the ghostly appearance of Freddie Jackson change Goddard's life and manage to open a door to something incomprehensible? Well, we'll never know.